Hello and welcome everyone to this insightful YouTube session. Guys, we've spoken a lot about depression, anxiety and suicide. But there's one common thing, one little thing that we always forget to talk about. It is very common in children, especially teenagers. And we all have done it in our life at some point of time. This is the topic that we're going to talk about today. We are talking about self-harm or self-injury. The question that you can ask me now is what is self-harm? What is self-injury? Have you ever noticed a person with a lot of cuts all over their hands? Or sometimes with a cluster of cuts at just one place? At just one place? That is what self-harm is. It is the act of hurting oneself without the intention to die. It includes behaviors like cutting, biting, hitting, reopening wounds, burning, etc. The question that might come to your mind next is, why would someone do this? Why would someone resort to such a behavior? What can be so stressful that a person is not able to deal with? Obviously, it is painful. The behavior in itself is painful. So why would someone actually inflict that something on themselves? People often do it to relieve stress or discomfort. Let us understand this. Sometimes the pain or the pressure or the stress becomes too much to handle. That cut or that little hitting yourself or that burning yourself becomes an outlet for the pressure. It becomes an outlet for the stress. It is actually a way of dealing with intense or complex emotions. What do you mean by that? Sometimes the emotions are too much or sometimes the emotions are too negative and too complex for an individual to comprehend. For example, if a child is sexually abused, the child does not understand what he or she is going through. He or she just knows that this is not right, this is wrong. The child does not enjoy that. The child is not liking the way he or she is being treated. And sometimes the child is asked to stay quiet about it. That chup rehna can sometimes be a lot of pressure a lot of intense emotions which the child is not able to share which the child is not able to even comprehend and these intense emotions and complex emotions are dealt with in this way by cutting yourself by biting yourself by punishing yourself how do we know if a person is actually suffering from something like this how do we help a person who's suffering from something like this there are signs we can be vigilant about a person who talks a lot about self-injury, a person who has suspicious looking scars, a person who has a cut on his hands would not be able to explain it in a manner that, okay, I fell down the stairs and that is why I got this cut. No, that's not how you get a cut. You either cut yourself or you get cut. So suspicious looking scars, it can't really be explained. Wounds that won't heal. You would, see that wound con you would see that wound continuously on that person. It would not heal. There would be cuts on the same places. Remember I told you there would be a cluster of cuts on the same places. The person would not like to enjoy social gatherings, would avoid social activities and always wants to stay in isolation, always wants to stay alone. These are some symptoms you can focus on. If you notice any of these symptoms in any of the people around you, please make sure that you help them. Now it is important that we know some interesting facts about these, about this thing called self-harm. Why do you think we need to know these facts? Because a lot of stigma is attached with all these disorders. Depression, yes, now it has come out in the open, people are accepting it much more easily. But this is still something which is attached with a lot of stigma and not just stigma, a lot of judgment actually. So first thing that we have to keep in mind is a very important thing actually that it is not done to get attention or to be dramatic. No one, remember, no one would like to cut themselves, you know, would like to go through that pain just to get attention. A person can do anything. A person can do small little things to get attention. No one goes through, go, will go through that kind of pain just to get attention or to be dramatic. We have to understand that the person is suffering from a lot of emotional 
pain a lot of stress to go into that behavior also sometimes viewing online content about self harm can trigger that behavior so yes media influences is a big thing that we have to keep in mind and i think it's a responsibility of the media to showcase these things in a much more glorified manner in a much more dignified manner in a much more explained manner so that everyone can understand what they're seeing and it does not trigger the behavior self harming individuals often try to hide their behavior just like in depression they often you know have this thing that they are very happy they always portray themselves to be happy they because they know because they believe that there's no one out there to understand them and that is why they keep up with this facade they keep up with this mask that they're really happy they try to hide their behaviors also i think a very a very interesting fact here is that is very common in females why do you think it's very common in females females go through an awful lot in their life sexual harassment molestation uh, domestic violence child abuse a lot of things and for most of these things they have been asked to stay quiet they have been asked ki chup raho all these things adds to the pressure all these things adds to the negative emotions and hence it becomes really difficult to comprehend these emotions and hence a female finds no other way but to deal with it in this manner by cutting themselves by harming themselves but again the good news here is that it is not something without cure it is curable it has ways there are ways and means by which we can cure it first of all one of the main important things here is that you can always take the help of your therapist you can go to the therapist you can take therapy here okay different kinds of therapies are used behavior therapy cognitive therapy psychodynamic therapies to treat this thing next what we have is medicine but a word of caution here guys whenever someone prescribes you medicine try not to take it you will ask me why i'm suffering from something why should i not take medicines medicines for psychological disorders medicines for something like this work like painkillers jitne time ke liye for uh, the time you are on painkillers it will be good for you but as soon as the painkiller wears off as soon as the painkiller wears off you will feel the pain much more and sometimes medicines can also get addictive it's just a temporary temporary way of dealing with this thing it's just a temporary way of not feeling the pain it's not something you can go on for your life the best support i think you can get the best help that you can get is your family help if there are people in your family if you have friends if you have family cousins who you can actually talk to i think this would be the best help that you can ever get but the best therapy that you can ever get no one can help you much more than your family can so it's my humble request to everyone anyone out there who is doing something like that please please speak up whatever you feeling there are people out there to hear you please speak up just go to anyone talk to them vent out your emotions take them out because this is not a behavior you would like to indulge in it's painful sharing something with someone for the first time can be painful but it will actually ease your pain so please 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 it's a humble request do try this I really hope this session was useful to you. I really hope that you understood something. I really hope to all those people who do not, you know, who do not who are not doing something like this, but they have friends around them, will be able to help them. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.